Uh, my name is Oakley Shumway. I'm from Goodman Oaks Church of Christ. And this is my first year. And I was given James chapter 4, verses 1 through 10. It reads, What causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? You desire and do not have, so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. You adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you suppose it is to no purpose that the scripture says, He yearns jealousy over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us, but he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. So, what is the importance of practicing humility and submitting to God? Our relationship with God. That's what's important. There should be nothing more important than our relationship with God. We as humans tend to try having a friendship with both the world and God. It's just not possible, though. In verse 4 it reads, Do you not know that friendship with the world is in enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. We need to choose to be friends with God instead of the world. We need to choose God over our phones. We need to choose God over drinking, smoking, all of the sinful things that the world has to offer. We need to choose God because the things the world has to offer is no good and is no good for us in the long run. Oh, think about this. Think about your best friend. How do you think they would feel if there was somebody or something they can't stand? And let's say that person that they hate or can't stand, you start texting and hanging out with them more than your best friend, and you only talk to them every once in a while. Or that thing they, they let you know they hate, and then you turn right around and do it, even though you know they hate it. Y'all probably wouldn't be friends anymore. Well, this is how we treat God, but He still loves us. This should really make us want to treat Him the way that He treats us, with love and always giving us mercy and grace. We need to talk to Him every day and spend time in His Word every day. We need to try our best to make it to church every time we can. We need to sing praise to Him, thank Him, and there are many other things we can do to keep a good relationship with Him. We can't just grab God off the shelf on Sundays and Wednesdays and put Him back up there until next time we go to church. We need to talk to Him every single day to keep a good relationship with Him. Another way we can grow and strengthen our relationship with God is by practicing humility. And if anybody's wondering what the definition of humility is, Humility is the quality of being humble, which means having a modest or low view of one important, one's importance. It involves being respectful, not boastful, and being willing to acknowledge one's limitation or mistakes without pride or arrogance. In verse 6, it reads, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. I am not a humble person by any means, but I can and will change that. We all need to be humble, because if not, fights, quarrels, and arguments start between everybody. Let's say you're with a few friends, and y'all are playing a sport or video game or something else competitive. One person is being cocky about how good they are at the game. Somebody else says that they're better, and then they just go back and forth trying to prove who is better until one person gets mad, and then it all goes down the hill from there. 
like in the story of David and Goliath, where Goliath is being super cocky because he's this big, giant warrior. And David's just a young shepherd with an innocent weapon. Or not innocent, a humble weapon. Just a sling and a stone. But defeats Goliath and humbles the Philistines. In Philippians 2, verse 3, says, Do nothing from selfish ambition and conceit, but in humility count others more significant than ourselves. This reminds me of one of my mom's favorite sayings. The world does not revolve around you. But we need to realize that it really doesn't. She was telling us this whole time. There's other people out there that we could help. There's other people out here that don't have it as good as we do. There's, there's things we can do to humble ourselves out there and help other people. So next time you see somebody who could use some help, help them. Humble yourself for God and submit yourself to God. I can promise you that in the long run, you would rather have a good relationship with God than the world and its wor worldliness. It doesn't matter what your friends think, what people around you think, it's the right thing to do.